The camera begins by overlooking the waveless lake in the red city of Agmar. The suns are shining overhead as we look upon a wide, supernaturally placid lake as smooth as a pane of glass, despite the many citizens that are enjoying its cool waters today. Suddenly, a breeze begins to blow, a faint but chilling gust of air that causes a tingling sensation on the skin. A quiet rumble can be heard in the distance, perhaps a storm coming? Impossible on a clear sunny day like today, but the rumble persists and a few sunbathers start to take notice. A shout of exclamation, a cry of alarm, as those deeper in the lake see something begin to emerge from the still waters. A large green orb with four protruding legs and a set of jet black eyes slowly begin to pierce the glassy water. The sky darkens as clouds rush in far too quickly. The rumbling of thunder can be heard clearly now, and as the first crack of lightning deafens the nearest swimmers, the large green orb begins to move closer to the beach, resolving into a large tree frog. Panic seizes the waveless lake as black clouds shift and twist into strange formations. Terror grips the hearts of onlookers as they flee to safety. But those that foolishly turn back see a massive green bulbous form smash a nearby boat as the tendrils in the sky display a single message. Golden Tree Rules! Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, what a what an ill portent. Yeah. <laughs> to start this particular session of uh, of our podcast. What podcast is that? You might ask. <laughs> well, that's Reckless Attack, the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons actual play podcast that you are listening to right now. That we are all participating in. And who is it that is participating? Well, for starters, it's me, GM Nathan. Hello. I'm joined by all the players. Hello, players. Hi. To my left. Hello, GM Nathan. It's me, Sophie, and I play Velasca Carter, the human asterisk cleric of the Arcana domain. And man, Val is amped, pumped, nervous, may vomit. It's library day. <laughs> <laughs> not from the not from the large frog from the intro. Val has no idea what's Got happening with yeah, that yeah. frog. She Would... is at the breakfast table two hours before she normally wakes up because she just can't sleep, has triple checked all of her gear and is trying to eat, but just like is too jittery. And to my left. Hi, I'm Jonathan and I play Checkers, the Grung Druid, and his trusty frog pals, Mango and Junior. And today, Checkers is nowhere to be seen. Just completely vanished. Last we heard from him, he was off making friends somewhere outside the city of Agmar, and no one has heard from him since. But it is very nice of you, Jonathan, to still be here as like a moral yeah, support right. player, essentially. We're not playing a character or anything, no. just here for like good vibes. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing the background NBCs today. Perfect. <laughs> and to my left. Hi, everyone. I'm David, and I play Cashman Brightmane, the Dwarven Warlock. And I can imagine Kaskrin is like running down the street, like at reports of this giant green tree frog emerging from the waveless lake. And it's like, what is happening? And then all of a sudden there's just like Godzilla vibes as he <laughs> emerges from the lake and is like tramp, you know, I don't know. Checker steps or, on a boat or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's my left. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Steve and I am playing Selv Asterlin, the dragonborn monk, who if I had to rate selves, I don't know what to call it, anticipation of this day, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would say below Val. I mean, that's, it would be no physically impossible be to yeah, be yeah, yeah, really so. even equal to, let alone <laughs> so, surpassing. So. Uh, but above 
Checkers, I think. And, and no, 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 let me let me let me explain. See, I, I know Checkers is really excited about this because it's kind of like the well, the restricted section. Yeah. But I imagine in Checkers' mind, it's like the forbidden section. <laughs> and so therefore Checkers really wants to go there. But Selv being a dragonborn and being, you know, dragon-ish, and the hoarding of knowledge is kind of big with that particular group. I think Kaskrin is like the least excited because he was the most excited to make the presentation. And now that we're actually going in, it's like, eh, well, can I make another presentation? Right, yeah. <laughs> what kind of trifold board skills yeah. can is I bring more? What about, what about you guys go get it and I will then present it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the findings to the council. Exactly. And what is it that we're doing today? We've alluded to it, but that's right, ladies and germs. Germs oh, being the gender neutral term. Um, we're heading to the library today. Oh, yeah. That's what you expect from your hot D&D <laughs> podcast <laughs> yeah. action. But we, we're not just going to the Agmar Public Library, the library of the Red City. No. Our adventurers today are going into its restricted section. Oh, Ooh. oh, it's serious. Neat. That's for sure. These level seven adventurers. That's right. Level seven, you get to finally what? go to the library. Oh, yes. <laughs> level uh, siete. <laughs> uh, you guys have been tasked with going into the library to obtain somewhere between two and five very specific books for Lorana Moonglove, the kind of mysterious, weird sorceress who you guys met, who has promised to help you with the bones and specifically helping you guys find a solution either to fix a few of them or maybe provide a permanent way to fix those who have been broken in perpetuity depending on how many books you guys come out with you guys have spent a little bit of time kind of you know gearing up i don't know did you guys decide how long like you you know you had two weeks for lorana to come mm-hmm and you wanted a little bit of wiggle room just in case something weird happened, some weird time dilation, some whatever. How much, how much like breathing room are you guys giving yourselves? Are you like, I need a week of downtime and preparation? Are you like, week and a half? We can do it day before, night of, no problem. <laughs> like, I got this. Easy peasy. Val absolutely not could wait that long. She <laughs> rounded everybody up. There is at least a week uh, after this because. She wants to read the books before she gives them to Lorana and also just could not physically wait anymore to get <laughs> to the restriction. Yeah, I think I think if Val gave us three days, that would be probably the most that she could <laughs> she, she'd be like, All right, it's you know, it's day four, we're we're going. Everybody's ready. You ready? You ready? Everybody ready? We're ready. Well, in addition to that, Val did also mind link with an untethered bones and experience the sheer yeah. emotion of rage and bloodlust and in behind all of that there is still a mind who is uncontrolled but aware mm -hmm. that they are in this prison of emotion so that is also driving her to mm -hmm. get this done and if like something does go wrong in that week, potentially we could try again. Yeah. And like the librarians may have told her, no, this is a one shot kind of deal. And Val's like, no, we'll figure out. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. I'm going to do need my to best. Go back in. Yeah. Do my best to get everything done and get what we need. But she wants to get, have that backup plan. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. So you, well, most of the golden tree adventuring guild find themselves outside of the library. It is, I presume, pretty early in the day, pretty much first thing. I guess, is Kaskarin also there yet? He was off this morning tending to an emergency. <laughs> but I think, I don't know, I feel like after realizing that it was a large frog, <laughs> it was like, this is fine. Like, you know, tending to the people and then it's like, well, we I have an appointment. Like, I, I gotta go. Well, in that case, so if you did actually go over there, then we'll say you're not there yet. Okay. In part because probably you would know that if just you showed up without the full rest of the party who you maybe had the ability to drag over. Okay. Yep. <laughs> sure. Yep. 
Okay, yeah, Kaskrin's not there either. So, Checkers has been gone for a bit. Kaskrin left in a flurry of activity earlier this morning. I assume promised, oh, I'll be right back. Yep. No worries. It's library day. I gotcha. Finger guns on the way out, and then just full sprint down the street. <laughs> Val is just, sh- like, trying to shoot Mind Sliver at you <laughs> to be like, absolutely not. Yeah, you have back. just, like, a ticking clock in your mind. But Ten you minutes, run, 15 you minutes max. I'll be right back. And so Selv and Val find themselves at the appointed time outside of the Agmar Library. Checkers has not been heard from for, now that you think about it, like, maybe the better part of a day? At least, yeah. Like, I figure if it was, like, multiple days, maybe you would have postponed or something like that. But, like, Checkers is gone. Kaskarin is not here yet. How are you guys feeling in this moment? That was fuming. (laughs) This was, like, I don't want, it's not, like, Christmas morning, but it's, like, what's it, like, Kind of equivalent, like where, like a big camping adventure. No, you're about to go on a big like, ooh, my like my fun summer camp is starting. Or I think for Val, it's more like the day before a big test, where like she is excited because she has prepared a lot for it. She feels confident in her skills, but there's still that like fluttering of the stomach. Like she is nervous because something could go wrong. Like. She has done everything she can do to prepare for it, but could be thrown a curveball. And that curveball has already happened. (laughs) Upwards of two (laughs) curveballs. She has not even gotten to the test yet. (laughs) What is, uh, pay me like a picture of like, what is Val doing? Like, as she is, stewing is maybe not the right word, but like, is experiencing the ups and downs (laughs) that she is currently. Like, she is waiting outside the library. What does that look like? Oh, she is pacing and fuming and just, like, muttering under her breath. Does she have, like, a big backpack on of, like, supplies? Oh, she's got, like, all of her adventuring gear on. Uh, She has made more granola. And she's just like, well, I'll just throw their granola in the fountain. (laughs) Get any granola. Just Val's just slamming handfuls of their (laughs) granola. Be like, oh, that'll teach them all of their... Um... But yeah, she's just she's just fuming, and then she kind of goes from fuming to like practical thoughts of like, well, what happens if they don't show up? Like, can we still do this? Do we have to postpone? They called in extra librarians to work overtime <laughs> today, and just like going through different scenarios, and then cycles back to being mad about ad checkers and cast grades. Is Val me? Is Val? Yeah. Is Val Nathan? <laughs> Uh, I'm also just like, I'm sad because none of those items that you're worried about are, is Checkers okay? How does he feel? <laughs> 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 this is emotional state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like, no. how do you Is he having a nice time? I haven't seen him in a day or two, you know? Like, where is he? I feel like that is not just, odd. If, no, if he ever shows this, up, I will murder him. Yeah, right. I will strangle him. I, I hope he's okay because I'm going to kill him. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah no, I... I Val <laughs> is not worried about Checkers because... He goes away, like, all the time and (laughs) always shows back up. I don't think it would cross her mind to be worried about Checkers because he's always fine. (laughs) Yeah, Like, whatever the situation is, Checkers comes out on top. It's fine. Yep. The frog stack prevails. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then, Selv, what's the, like, counter or, like, corresponding or the Selv energy? Well, as Val is, like, pacing behind, like, I'm imagining just, like, basically in a big circle around you were like sometimes it's in front of the camera and it's behind you and it's in front of the camera so Selv is doing his best to project a feeling of calm and is willing this calm upon (laughs) Val which does not seem to be taking hold it takes hold occasionally like you know she slows down she you know and then it's immediately back to the pacing and then I think after a few minutes, Selv will actually sit down on the steps of the library and attempt to to meditate, to center himself before going into the library, and will occasionally open up one eye and try to catch Val's attention and maybe 
pat the ground next to him. <laughs> just to, yeah. And then, nope. yeah. you know, and then Val just kind of keeps going and then Salve will shrug a little bit and then give it a few more minutes and then maybe open up his other eye and catch Val's attention and maybe pat the other side of the stairs. Val is <laughs> fuming too much for, totally. like, to even notice what is, like, Salve patting the ground or anything. <laughs> like, just, like, completely oblivious and kind of in her own world She'll occasionally, like, look up in the direction of... Just, like, do a quick scan, like, out from the library. But she doesn't have to look at self. He's here. And that will not (laughs) change. (laughs) Yeah. Eventually, after, like, a bit of waiting, you you guys both pick up with your, I think, very high passive perceptions. You overhear overhear some, some chatter, and it's like, did you hear what happened? The lake? The lake, yeah, no, it's it's crazy, it's wild, right? I I mean, I always knew the lake is weird, right? But like that, oh yeah, uh, the the eyes, God, like a doll's eyes. Oh, Val has a moment of panic when they start talking about the eyes. Was the Armisen eyes creature invading her mind palace <laughs> and shows up? Like, what the fuck? Not today. <laughs> and then it's like the doll's eyes, the frog's eyes. <laughs> She like whips around, like where were the frog eyes? <laughs> Points at this random stranger. Right, like, tell me about the frog eyes. This old man. Uh, and just at that moment, you turn in the general direction of the waveless lake, and David and Jonathan, what is it that the rest of your party sees in this moment? So I'm imagining walking down one of the main thoroughfares to the library is Kaskrin, Checkers, and Mango. And Mango is just plopping around, happy as can be, Mm -hmm. normal-sized green tree frog. (laughs) And Kaskrin just has, like, Checkers by the scruff of his neck, just holding him. (laughs) And Kaskrin is, like, soaked. Yeah. (laughs) Beard damp, like, you know, he's utterly, like, he was prepped and ready to go, and all of his equipment, all of his clothing, all of his armor just soaked. (laughs) And as the two of you approach, Checker is just kind of dangling by Kaskrin's rocky arm. The scruff of the <laughs> yeah, neck like yeah. a cat, just yeah. like dangling. Hi, Val. Hi, Sal. Morning. Is Checkers also soaked? Checkers is, he's got like, yeah, he's soaking wet, got bits of seaweed dangling off of him. Like his feet are clearly muddy. I feel like there's two very different attitudes about being wet, though, with these two people. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Kaskin will, like, set checkers down on his feet directly in front of the library stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just being like, go forward. Yeah. Here's where you need to You There. That's where you're going. We have a appointment today. <laughs> um, Selv will glance down at... I'm guessing that checkers and Cass stop kind of in front of us mm-hmm. and just dripping, and there's a small puddle beginning to form. Yep. As the drips drip into that puddle, is there a ripple? My question is, if you take water out of the waveless lake and bring it somewhere, is it still waveless? No, it is just in the property, because there's like rivers that flow into it and that kind of stuff, but like once it hits the boundaries of it is where it becomes like weird and still. And then the second you're like, you just dunk, you know, like a bucket in it. It's like, cool, slosh, sloshing around. Gotcha. Okay. Kaskrin, as he was like approaching the waveless lake, I imagine was met with like people fleeing the scene. Yeah. You know, just like, again, utter chaos. And he finds, <laughs> I, I'm imagining like Mango is large and he is like on the beach of the waveless lake just like kind of being a monolith and standing there and checkers is like next to him shouting to the sky like frankenstein's monster has yeah. just like <laughs> has yes. awoken yes, yes. Uh, i've done it and then there is some point where kaskrin approaches is like what the hell is the checkers and Mango, like, unfurls his large tongue and just, like, eats Kaskrin. Yeah. <laughs> so and, that, that's why Kas is wet? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and then, like, you know, we all, like, make our way to the library. Kaskrin sets Checkers down and is like, explain yourself. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, Cass. Mango just wanted to go for a swim. Just then, you guys hear a voice, a familiar voice behind you. Oh, hey, y'all are here. Hello. And you see 
just the head of Andromeda, the weird spider lady librarian, uh, who is just sticking out of the large doorway. Like, you see no parts of her body, no nothing. Just her kind of vaguely humanoid but multi-eyed head just sticking out and looking at all of you guys and just like, oh, y'all are here. Come on in. Come on in. I'm sorry if you were waiting for an invitation. Val will spin on a heel and start walking up the steps towards Andromeda. And we'll be like, yes, we're here. We're ready to go. And then we'll mind link Andromeda. I mean, like, just speed talking her frustration out <laughs> just about unloading. what happened. <laughs> And being like, I'm sorry, but like, I'm trying to keep it professional after she like just rants really quick to Andromeda. Just kind of like vent. And it's like, thank you for that. I appreciate you being here. And then we'll go back to speaking uh, normally. Does Val's facial expression change no. with the mind? <laughs> She's very practiced. No, very, okay. I think she is so practiced at doing it, especially like as a young kid doing it like with her brother uh, in front of her parents like gotcha. getting away with <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, secret yeah. communication yeah. where she can like choose to mimic her talking so that others might be able to see she's doing it but if she doesn't want you to know she's mind linking you do not know she is yeah. mind linking okay gotcha Andromeda uh, again is like by the time you guys enter into the library is literally already back at this Back at the, her welcome desk, you can see her many arms already going back to sorting, stamping, and otherwise dealing with all of the paperwork that go into running a massive, massive library like this. And again, as a reminder, the Agmar Public Library is a sight. It is beautiful. It is expansive. You can feel the cultural significance of it as you're in there. You can see unseen servants carrying piles of books and you can see a lot of activity of researchers of all kinds of stuff. And already it is kind of thrumming with activity. And Andromeda looks at you guys and just like, oh, uh, Val, you know where you're going? Yep, absolutely. Do and you need anything from us before we head over there? Not at all. There are already a few people there waiting. Good luck, y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Caspian has asked for a towel so he doesn't drip on the floor. <laughs> yeah, Checkers is actively dripping on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one giant kind of like hand appendage re reaches out again, impossibly just stretching long, hands one to Caspian, and then plops one just on top of Checkers <laughs> that just like covers him entirely. And now a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Burnaway, a new TTRPG about making tough choices while the world burns down around you. Burnaway is a game about grief, hope, personal bonds, and relationships forged in literal fire. Set in a retro punk world, players must stop the mournful and vindictive spirits called Embergeists by any means necessary. But be warned. The fallout of these fights will bond you closer to your allies or sink you deeper into despair. Each mission in Burnaway is a unique puzzle with many different solutions. Its unique mechanics make it easy to pick up, and its narrative-driven system makes it ideal for one-shots and short campaigns. Ultimately, the game's themes will help you reconsider what grief is and how your relationship with grief can change for the better. The Kickstarter campaign for Burnaway starts on October 3rd, just in time for Halloween. Head on over to Kickstarter and pick up your copy of Burnaway today. Hi everyone, Sophie here with the mid-roll. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website, recklessattack.com. There, you can find links to all of our social media, including Twitter, Instagram, and more. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is tell people about us. Tell your friends, family, and your barber. They'll love us, guaranteed. If you don't have any friends to brag about, or your friends are sicking about hearing how much you love us, 
feel free to leave us a review on your podcatcher of choice. We'd really appreciate it. If you want another way to support us, go ahead and check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash reckless attack. There, we have behind-the-screen episodes, level-up episodes, and more bonus content for you to enjoy and to learn what's happening inside our brains. We really appreciate you and hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye! So you guys head to the back of the library. I don't remember if you guys have seen it. I assume anyone who spent a good amount of time and would have asked to have been shown the restricted section would maybe have been able to see it. Thal has made it a point to memorize the entire layout of this library. (laughs) Makes sense. She is probably better than half the librarians there at finding what she needs. (laughs) She lets them help her because that is their job. But she's like, no, I know where this is. She's the Ron Swanson of like, I know what I'm doing, but in a nice way. And for those of you who haven't seen it or aren't as familiar with the library, the path to getting to the restricted section is more labyrinthine than you would expect to the point where you might not know where you are exactly. You're in the library, obviously. You're still you're cutting through stacks and then suddenly there's a new wing that you're like, wait, I thought that was back there. Okay, that's fine. But. Val, at least, knows the direction to go to. And it is, again, it is surprisingly hidden. I imagine, too, that it's like you have to hit the directions perfectly. Yeah. Like, you can't backtrack your last misstep if you miss, like, the right turn through the stacks. You have to, like, find your way back out and start back over. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Eventually, you guys start to see signs. First is just kind of like a section closed. Then you walk past that, obviously. And then, you know, then it kind of turns to, like, turn back. Hmm. Staff only. (laughs) (laughs) And then, finally, you kind of see an entryway that leads to kind of another wing that is labeled restricted section and underneath that there's an extended warning where it has the war- the word warning in kind of big red official Agmar red in mm-hmm. fact uh, lettering and under it is a full warning label that is multi multi lines long that goes into again this is the restricted section of the Agmar Library. According to city code XYZ, it has been closed to all, all members of the public. Side effects to entering include uh, loss of life and loss of face, etc., etc. Casper just accepts the term of the, <laughs> Wait, just accepts the terms of service without <laughs> reading it. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah you I guys know. Yeah, yeah, you guys know what you're here for. <laughs> I imagine the sign is bigger than checkers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> You must be this tall to enter the restricted section. You must be at least three years old to enter. Yeah. <laughs> well, sorry. Uh, the entire, like, um, what is it, wild magic yeah, table exactly. is listed. It, it, possible I mean, possible yeah. outcomes yeah. can not include. But you guys uh, presumably don't take the hint to turn around at this juncture. As soon as you go underneath the archway and this very long sign that, I don't know, maybe you have to duck under, apparently, (laughs) according to the head fiction we've been creating. Oh, see, this one I just imagine is like, uh, it's a door that swivels on the middle. So, like, when you go through the right side, like the the warning the of the warning sign, yeah, it just like turns, but around. it's just continuing the warning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't know it was double sided. Yes, yes, exactly. And there is where you kind of see again. It's just a pretty plain, almost tunnel kind of thing that mm-hmm. opens up a little bit further. And at the far end of this relatively short little hallway tunnel, you see several figures, as well as a lot of multicolored ambient glowing. Something that you all as level 7 guilders, uh, that's an official term, would all recognize as a lot of just pure magical energy all emanating from what appears to be a locked vault door. Ooh, freaky dicky. 
And <laughs> the words ooh freaky deaky <laughs> echo <laughs> down the tunnel. Everyone kind of turns and there are there are four people who are there at the moment. You recognize several of them, but you recognize one uh, first and foremost because this is the one that turns around and calls out to you and says, Ha! Hi, self. No. As, we can't have this curse before this. As a, as a <laughs> turtle wizard from your everyone's favorite rival guild, the Verdant Wave, Trankar the, the wizard, waves painfully slowly at the four of you as you walk in. Come on over, guys. And we're already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and he's, he's turning back. In addition to Trankart, you actually recognize most of the rest of this group because one, Granak the Minotaur, who again had been helping you, uh, who had connected you with Lorana, his ex- something or other, uh, but also had obviously helped you guys a little bit during the battle against the Mothman and all that stuff, and he kind of, uh, the big Minotaur, sees you guys and kind of does like a grunt wave as he is still kind of waving his hands over what you now see are a just unbelievable amount of runic work all across. In addition to what's coming from the vault, you see now that there are runes carved everywhere on wow. all the floors all the walls up on the ceiling like on pillars around that are kind of like holding up the ceiling around and is just covered hmm. with runes uh, and he just kind of like gives you guys a wave and like goes back to doing whatever it is that he's doing uh, you also uh, hear another familiar voice as you guys kind of approach and come into the light a little bit and you're like ah my friends hello it is so good to see you all Kaskarin, hello. Azan. <laughs> Azan is also here, uh, who is also here uh, and like is taping up pieces of paper, what it looks like, maybe spell scrolls, that kind of thing, and doing a lot of work and just kind of also waves at you guys. And Wait, this is in his pop-up shop? No, it is not. <laughs> it is not. Uh, he is presumably, his services have been hired by the city uh, or at least comped well. He's just going to open one side of his coat and be like, look at these scrolls. Yeah. <laughs> Cashburn is, is, he's in. Like, yeah. give, me, give me those scrolls. I know, I knew I wasn't prepared enough. For yeah. he's, got a, he's got a cloak of holding. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the fourth person who is here, you think you recognize for a second. But as you get closer, it's like, no, I don't, I don't know who that is. But they look really familiar for some reason. This person also just kind of looks at you and, and again, similarly gives you kind of a, a wave as this human man with kind of a darker complexion continues reading something from a book, you know, clearly doing some sort of spell craft something and must be doing some sort of spell casting at, in this moment. But again, takes a moment to acknowledge you. You said human man. Yes, correct. Okay. <laughs> My mind went immediately to the dark skin toned elf who opened a portal in the middle of a dryad field. Or Could be. Field. So. Not this one, though, as far as you can tell. Is there any familiar resemblance to Lorana? Would you like to make a roll of any sort to see if you can piece together who this person reminds you of? I would love to. Are you looking for like a perception thing or a history type what, uh, thing? What are, you, what are you vibing? I'm thinking perception. That sounds that's what I'm seems good pretty good to me. All right, here we go. Can I guess Vina Calvetta? Certainly, you can. You can guess anything. Okay, okay, you can guess fine. it's Godzilla. <laughs> okay. Oh, is it like her brother? That would be a sixteen. It is definitely Vina Calvetta. Hey. It is, it, like, how does how does Selv you recognize it? But I am fine because you, Jonathan, made the guess. How does checkers put it together <laughs> self self knows self is like this person looks exactly like perfect family resemblance it is wild maybe a few years younger and definitely dressed differently kind of in some very nice like brown white and kind of gold and red accented robes um, that are, are nice but very fashionably of the time if that mm -hmm. makes sense but in the face it's like oh yeah that's that person, there's no way that they're not related to Vina. 
I was going to say, Checkers is used to being ignored and dismissed by Vina Calvetta whenever she shows up. <laughs> so like, You've this, talked to her like twice. Yeah, and both times she's completely ignored him. And like the way that this man viewed Checkers and the rest of the party just looked up, barely waved, went back to spellcasting, dead on for how Checkers remembers Vina feeding him. <laughs> just, just being like, you're too much nonsense yeah, right. for me right, right real now. real Vina energy right, right Yeah, here. exactly. And that is how Checkers recognizes this person. And I'll even say that, Kaskrin, because you have done so much work on yeah. profiling people in the city and kind of knowing, especially about who's who and like, you would at least know his name, uh, which is Paulus Calvetta, um, which is basically Paul, but with an extra U.S., L-U-S at the end. And again, you would know him. He's an entre- like kind of an entrepreneur, basically a rich, a professional rich person, which is not unusual in rebuilding cities <laughs> like this. And apparently is also a skilled magician. And Casper will go up and like shake his hand and introduce, you know, like he'll say like Paulus Calvetta, I presume, uh, and like, you know, go through the whole introduction. But yeah, he's done the research. He knows who this is. Yeah, you would, you again, especially once the connection is yes, kind of yeah. made, it's like, ah, there's the name, there's the dossier, it's flashing back, I got it. He sees you coming and, like, puts a hand up and keeps reading the spell just for a little bit more until there is that kind of last, almost, like, <sighs> feeling. And as soon as you kind of hear that almost telltale arcane sound, mm-hmm. he finally drops his hand and turns to you and says, Ah, pleasure to meet you. Hello, uh, you have me at a disadvantage. Uh, I am indeed, Paulus. Uh, and, and you are? Kaskrin Brightmane of the Golden Tree Adventuring ah, Guild. Indeed. Uh, we work very closely with your sister, Vina. Yes, yes, that is my that was my understanding. And of course, and he looks kind of at all of you guys, I have heard great things about all the things you've done for the city and uh, on behalf of everyone here, thank you so much. Val, as he looks over at her, is like limbering up, like stretching and getting ready and also has like <laughs> her own. She's like doing like a string of like, you've prepared this. Just remember, like, this is the Just proposed do, layout. Doing some, a- some affirmations, yeah. basically. Yeah. Can I add something really dumb? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, better, better than anybody else I know. I will tentatively. I'll hear you out. Yes, David. So. I imagine Kaskrin, having read Paulus's dossier, mm-hmm. you know, knows some information about them. Totally. And one of the facts listed is, like, when he was 13, he was, like, number one in an Agmar-wide, like, spelling bee competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, genuinely, like, again, you would know this, and everyone at the table would know this, especially now that you've kind of interacted with Vina a few times. Like, the Calvettas are big deals like they are you know kind of hereditary mm-hmm. big deals from the pentarchy and were rich and powerful and i will say if there is a family who would be good at spelling bees the calvettas would definitely be <laughs> very good at spelling bees they can afford all the spelling bees. exactly right? yeah. they got yeah. tutors yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent that was it. That was it. Just, okay. I wasn't sure. It was like, is I thought Kaskrin... Kasker was going to bring it up. Right. That's yeah. me too. It's like, oh, hey, hey, big fan. I'm yeah. a spelling bee yeah. aficionado. <laughs> Always love to meet a champion such as yourself, sir. Nope. Just this is just I, a fun I, fact. That's, that's the thing I know about you. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm not going to bring it up and nobody will ever know about it again. Well, you can, <laughs> you, as you, as your eyes gaze over his spell book, you can see, wow, every one of those words spelled perfectly. Yeah, wow. Incredible. Incredible. And uh, Selv will exchange very slow pleasantries with Trancar. <laughs> no one can tell a joke in this chamber. Every- <laughs> <laughs> Checker, shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and at the time, as you guys have all kind of introduced yourselves, you guys are still doing the formal introductions over in the corner with the very slow Trancar. Paulus looks at you all and is like, uh, and of course, speaking of, I believe my sister was supposed to be here. Was she with you? Did you see her? She did not come into the library with us. I have not seen her yet this morning. I'm, uh, I'm certainly not worried. I was, I was surprised that she asked for my help, but I am not surprised that she is called elsewhere at the moment. 
Does Casper bring up that there was a frog incident at the Waveless Lake this morning? <laughs> no, he's talking the train car. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not talking the train car. It's not talking the train car. Everyone, everyone yeah, can, yeah. but like... I love the idea that like everyone is just like huddled around train car. Yeah. Just, this, <laughs> just everyone's chatting. Oh, I was I was gonna say to uh, to train car. Hey. No. Hey train car. What did Spartacus say when the lion ate his wife? Who's Spartacus? Nothing. He was gladiator. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> You're in timeout. <laughs> okay, bye. Frankar hasn't moved a muscle. <laughs> and it just has this thousand yard stare for a moment and then slowly looks over at you and makes very, very direct eye contact. Ha! 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 And continues for some time. <laughs> Perfect. We actually can't get into the restricted section now because Trankar yeah. can't stop laughing. Can't, yeah. <laughs> he just doubled he was over. the last component of uh, the, yeah, yeah, the last part of the spell. You don't understand Gladiator. <laughs> ha. 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 Izan's like, please, can we just, can we get, can I have things, I have to open the shop. <laughs> nope, because Trankar is in like a very four times slow knee slap. Knee slap. <laughs> <laughs> Paulus kind of comes up to you guys as Trankar turns away, wheezing, just <laughs> truly losing his mind, and says, "Um, well, uh, while we're waiting, I believe we need official city say so to let you all in. But in the meantime, what do you know?" Any updates that I can provide for you of what we've been doing about what's going on, about your plans, any way I can be of use? Well, Paulus, I appreciate you being here. I think I'd love to know what you all have been up to, but our plan is to get the start with our first two books that are required to complete the spells. I think we are going to start with the Pentarchy Proclamations, Volume 19, as Going straight for the Liber Morte seems like, seems ill-advised. We should kind of warm up to such a hefty tome. Hmm. Certainly, I don't have any uh, opinions on, on whatever order that you decide to do it. I am more of a a book-learned magician. You see, I'm not, uh, not a gilder such as yourselves. I'm sure your route is what will be best, though I will say um, it is probably very wise of you to... Make sure that you get whatever you need, whatever you truly need, first. Because, uh, well, we're doing our best, but there is significant arcane leakage coming from the restricted section at the moment. Uh, it's usually safe when weed is all the way fully sealed, but now that we've cracked it open for you all to enter, it is, um, it's a little tricky. We'll probably only have a few hours. Our best guess is four to five total to find whatever books you need before, well, before decisions have to be made, shall we say. Can I ask, what does the room look like at this point? Especially the runes, like the spell work that's going on? Because I'm, I'm trying to gauge, like, are we barely containing this magical energy that's like fighting to get out mm -hmm. or like what's the deal yeah can you roll me i would take our i mean arcana technically or uh even like a i would do it i'll give you a perception okay or, like, or whatever else if there's anything else that you're vibing i'll go with perception for mm -hmm. this one just to see like what's up that is a 14 so it's hard to say just because like this is some pretty technical stuff mm -hmm. happening in front of you and you're just looking at it at a glance but other than the fact that it's just a large vault door <laughs> basically in front of you that is like gleaming at the sides you take a kind of step back and just kind of read the room like you said suddenly your perspective shifts and you kind of take in the amount of, of rune work and all of the scraps of protective spell work and all the kind of wisps of things happening. 
And it's like all of it is all pointed at the vault, you know, where it's almost like an optical illusion where every bit of whatever arcane might has Mm -hmm. been mustered is all pointed directly at this vault. And so you don't know how much or how bad, but you can tell that all of this is what they deem necessary. And Paulus would tell you that they are holding it and absorbing it and redirecting it. Yeah. And so that's the level of work just to kind of like judo throw it (laughs) in a way that is not dangerous. If that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. Does all of this um, excess magical energy, will that interfere with any spells that are cast inside the restricted section? That is hard to say. Not knowing what is in there, and we've tried. Divination is a little uh, finicky. Our best guess is no. But our best best guess is that we don't know. And what about physically exposure to that much um, undirected magical energy? Yes, that is an excellent point. And before you go in, be sure to speak to Azan. I believe he has some some ideas, some countermeasures for you all. And behind Paulus, kind of in the shadows of this weird kaleidoscope room, not towards the entrance you guys came in. You see something moving and something unfurl itself from the ceiling. Andromeda? Hi, y'all. How's it going? (laughs) Everyone settled okay? Good. And Andromeda shows up. But now you can actually see her, I think for the first time, outside of her desk. It's a lot to take in. Andromeda is, again, just like a weird kaleidoscope of a being where there are just always arms like a centipede just crawling around and kind of moving and that kind of stuff. And she is very human, but also very not human and all of this, but has a big smile on her face like, hey, guys, so sorry I was late. Everyone settled in. Everyone introduced themselves. Great, great. Awesome. And I know that Captain Calvetta is on her way in as well. And just as that kind of comes, you hear boots come down, echo Mm -hmm. down the hallway, and you see a doubly familiar face uh, (laughs) of Vina Calvetta, the captain of the Red Guard. And as she gets closer, you realize it's not just a boot clomping sound. There's kind of a squish to the boots as well. And you see as she approaches that Vina Calvetta is also quite damp. (laughs) (laughs) Vina approaches you all, and looks around, you know, she kind of very effectively looks around, meets all of her eyes, kind of nods, nods. Her eyes settle on Mango and her eyes settle on Checkers. Notice me, Senpai? Yeah, Ch- Ch- <laughs> Checkers is very excited just to, like, finally get the attention that he deserves. <laughs> Witness from... me! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just lights up. It's like, hi, Vina. Good to see you. And she continues looking at you very, very impassively. And she says, I apologize, everyone. I was spoken for. I had a small crisis to attend to, some facts to gather about some happenings down at the lake. Thank you all once again for being here. We, of course, appreciate it. I am I am here mostly as a formality to be a member of the city who is officially granting you access here into the library. But everyone well? Everyone feeling confident? Absolutely. We can do this. Confidence is high. Good. Vina just kind of looks at you as like, well, all right. Now that I'm here and everyone is here, and uh, as long as our various wizards and magicians believe that things are contained well enough, are you all ready to enter into the restricted section? I believe we were instructed to speak to Azan before we actually um, go in. Uh, oh, oh, yes, of course, of course. Hold on, hold on. And you hear Azan is like ruffling through all sorts of papers uh, and just like tearing apart a backpack. He comes over with just five sheets of paper and he looks at each of you, walks up to you each individually and then looks 
and then kind of looks down at the paper and then looks back at you and there's a couple of just kind of arcane symbols on it and then he starts folding up the paper very quickly and very efficiently and we'll say he starts with Kaskrin and after he is done folding he hands you the thing that he's folded and it is just a little humanoid with a big beard <laughs> that is vaguely Kaskrin shaped Kaskrin takes it mostly surprised that this is free of charge <laughs> <laughs> oh it's not free of charge it is just you're not paying for it the city is paying for ah, it mm. And Zahn would even say that. (laughs) (laughs) But Kastrian will believe in his heart of hearts. It's free for him. (laughs) Right, exactly. And Zahn's like, ah, yes. uh, And one one for each of you, please be sure to take this. This is kind of a, how to explain it quickly. It's kind of like a a stand-in representation of your corporeal beings, if that makes sense. We hope, we think, no. I feel relatively sure that this is going to do everything that it needs to protect you. It's going to try and, you know, kind of basically just keep you in mortal shape, like the shape, the literal physical shape of you. That should help. Um, It will. No, it will help. Guaranteed. Asterisk. Um, So everyone have one of these. Keep it in a pocket somewhere close to you on your person. It's very important. But hopefully this will give you some amount of protection, at least while you're in there, against things. Consider it a good luck charm. A good luck charm. But uh, no money back. If you have bad luck. It's different. Val is going over in her mind of like, Okay, okay, so the raw magical force that we're about to enter into is probably going to try to turn us into goop monsters. So therefore, we're getting this corporeal exoskeleton. Kind of, cool, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, like a, yeah, like a yeah, like um, an astral exoskeleton, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, you know in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, when they try to do too many jumps in a row? Yeah, right, or Hitchhiker's Guide, you go to uh, the various right, dimensions, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Azan kind of like hands it to you and just kind of like pats it your hands each time he hands it to you and uh, even hands one to Mango mm-hmm. that is just kind of like one of those little like origami frogs that like yeah. you can make hop if you want their butts. <laughs> um, Question for you, Azan. What happens if I don't have my own little figure? Like, what happens if I have Val's figure? Well, first of all, the magic is guaranteed. The strongest guarantee that I can possibly offer to you is going to this. However, there is an extended warranty, and unfortunately, swapping uh, paper souls with other people does break the warranty. I would advise against it, and and the reason is because um, well, it gets messy. Val, mind links, checkers, like fucking try it. <laughs> <laughs> I will end you. <laughs> now is not the time to mess with checkers. You are already on my short list. Fist of ice, yes. <laughs> checkers. Uh, forget I asked it. Thanks, Azan. I am excited to meet Vango and uh, <laughs> Ch- 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 yeah. Cheskarin. Just a, a, tra- <laughs> a Star Trek transporter accident where yeah. they get fused yeah. into one being. Yeah. Um, and. As kind of those final preparations are made and, and that sort of thing, Andromeda comes over and is also kind of fussing over you guys and is like, well, you know, hey, great luck. We we're all rooting for you here at the library. Uh, you guys are some of our favorite patrons. We really appreciate it. We understand. We were happy. Uh, and this is this is not me. This is on behalf of the library board uh, who send their regards. We appreciate the sacrifice that we are being asked to make of uh, of donating some books in the long term semi permanent loan. Um, so, while you're in there, if you were to find and safely bring back some interesting pieces, it would be very appreciated. Understood. We will do our best. Kind of with that, everyone goes back to their positions around the vault. Specifically, all four of the people who are here when you got here, kind of going back to making sure that everything is locked down, everything's where it needs to be, charging it with one last burst of kind of energy, whatever they need. Andromeda kind of takes a few steps back and maybe, I don't know, shunts herself up into the dark, deep corner of of the room. (laughs) I imagine she like locks the door into this chamber and then pulls on 
just this ginormous set of like goggles yeah. and <laughs> oh, it's like for all eight eyes yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and Vina Calvetta stands basically with you guys she says like a little bit quieter of uh, when it's just kind of the five of you of are you all still feeling truly up for this I've talked to the shield and everyone will understand if this is too unknown if this is too dangerous if there are second thoughts now that you're seeing this I can't speak for my fellow guild members but I am so excited for this Kaskrin has a bit more of a worried look on his face but he does tell Vina this is what we signed up for not just this door, but many unknown doors. This is what we became adventurers for. And we're going to be the first people through this spooky, unknown, magical portal into a restricted section of the library that no one has ever been to before? Yeah, I want to go, of <laughs> course. Self so will place one hand on Vina's shoulder and just uh, look at her directly in the eye and just say, we have this. And she looks around at you, even to checkers. <laughs> <laughs> a canon now that Vina just ignores checkers. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a big deal every yeah. time. And yeah. if only you all at home could see Jonathan's just huge shit eating grin yeah. every time. <laughs> just, so just so happy. Just yeah. deeply happy. And she looks around and kind of and makes meaningful eye contact with each of you, both as you say, you kind of give your response, but also in that just half a beat afterwards and she just gives a decisive nod and says all right i'll open the door i'll close it behind you hurry back and she approaches like she walks kind of over all of the intricate rune work and up to this vault door that is 10 15 feet tall and is almost now that you're up, it's not a circle. It is an archway where it is almost a perfect vault door for what must have just been a hallway. As all of the prismatic lights are shining through it, she kind of puts two hands on the big dial, I guess, that opens it up and looks back at you guys and nods. She spins the vault dial, I suppose, and it just circles and circles and circles, and it must be perfectly made or, or even illusory, who knows. And then she grabs it and yanks it back. As the door gets flung open, you see at your feet above you on the walls all around you on those columns, you see all those runes just light up in a cascade all those different colors you're seeing and all just kind of humming with this neon energy as it is trying to contain or redirect or who knows what any number of fail safes as this outpouring of energy hits you guys and there's an initial kind of just like blowback against your bodies that you can feel and then it all just kind of equalizes and you can feel this warmth ahead of you as you step through the doorway into the restricted section. And that is where we will pick up next week. Hooray! We did it! The Yay. library! As far as we know, we're all still alive! Yay! <laughs> See you next week. Bye! Bye. Bye. I will say, Sophie, you will get plenty. I, please um, 
proactively ask for uh hello it's me your girl val i know some library <laughs> yeah. stuff it's your girl val whose entire background is, is library, library. Who, whose this, job this, is this my, val's job is, is library is library <laughs> exactly uh I feel like jurassic park this is a linux system right yeah. i know this system. exactly <laughs> uh there will probably be a few times where i'll be like in a normal library you would 100 percent know about this or this is this ain't that, uh, but I think for the most part there'll be a lot of a lot of times again of like getting advantage on things or you know little little boons and bonuses or what have you. So so now our merch is going to be uh, each character's. Oh, my job is yeah, Val's job is library. 